Hey guys, welcome to this video. As you can see, my keep net has 447 pounds. 447 point. Oh god, my eyesight's so bad. 447.374 pounds of 440.925 pounds. It's just a little bit over full. So, you know, um, I'm a level 45, almost, and I have made some serious mistakes in this game. One being, like, going to a lake, after buying a new boat, thinking I didn't take my boat with me, going back home, reloading up my boat on my person, and then going back out to the lake. So I spent $14,000 to travel to a $7,000 travel fee lake. Um... There's a couple of things that I do know, you know, there are a lot of variables in fishing, and most of them work against the angler, so you might be new to fishing planet, you might be old to fishing planet, maybe this will help you, maybe you already know it, maybe, you know, it's not something that you can grasp the concept of, but anyway, there's a couple of things, you know, that you have to know about your lure, one is, are you presenting it properly to the fish? Now, every lure has an optimum operational range. That means that the water pressure in the lake is going to affect how your lure works. So, if you're fishing that lure too deep, it's not going to work correctly. If you're fishing it too shallow, it's not going to work correctly. Now, let's take a look at how... You would determine with the considerations of your reel speed, your retrieval rate, your pressure of the lake having an effect on your lure. And what I like to call this is the rule of thirds. Okay, So you have three types of levels in a lake. Right, You have the top, which where you would use top water lures you have the bottom you would use a sinker right and then you have everything in between that would be your lures your crankbaits your buzz baits your you know um narrow spoons your spinners they're all going to have a depth at which <laughs> they have a maximum effect on a fish now the thing you have to know about a fish is not every single fish will eat because it's hungry most of the fish that we fish for in fishing planet are predators predators will hit a lure just because it's in its territory it aggravated it it made it mad and it will kill it just in order to you know show that hey this is my kingdom i live here you're trespassing so not being a big person who advances in time. Let's take a look at how we get a fish to bite during a non-peak time. How we target his aggression and use it against him when everything else goes against the angler. Okay, so let's go back out to our map. Oh boy. Go back out to our map. Controller turned itself off. Map. All right. Go fish. All right. So, I'm going to have to rebuy my license for here. Because my license expired. Get our license. Let's go fish. All right. So, once again, if you look up there, my bag is yellow. I can't get nothing else into it. Right, so we're going to have to go to the next day. So, let's forward our time to the very next morning. Now, I'm not going to go into a peak time, right? That's important to remember. Again, you can fish to peak times if you want to. This will probably work a lot better for you then. But, we're just going to forward to the next day. Right? Why? Forward to the next day. Extend our stay. Yes. All right. 
So now let's take a look, right? We're not in a peak time. So, rule of thirds. Now this is a pretty shallow lake. This works in a deep lake. It works shallow lake, middle level lake, whatever. So, now, once again, your real speed makes a big difference. The barometric pressure outside, the pressure of the lake, all things that an angler has to take into consideration. So, what we want to do, now, in rule of thirds, remember, there's the top, there's the middle, and there's the bottom. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our reel, and we're going to turn it to speed down all the way as far as it will go. So, our cast was 103 feet. Let's let our lure settle to the bottom, right? So, let's come back into... 100 oh, 100 feet right so we can apply our rule of thirds so there's three parts to a lake top middle and bottom once again okay so <coughs> three will go into 100 33 and a third times so we put our lure on the very bottom right we divide the 100 by our three which gives us 33 and a third now, if you just do a straight reel in, right, by the time your lure gets to 33 and a third feet, due to the speed of your reel and the pressure of your lake, your lure will begin to twitch. Or it will actually tell you that you are doing, because my reel has a fairly high recovery rate, it will probably say straight. If you have a lower... Um, um, gear ratio or lower recovery rate it will probably say straight slow but at some point before that lure gets to 33 and one third feet we will start a presentation okay here we go so there we go right you see where the presentation started all right so let's let it settle again <clears throat> Now our cast is at 87 feet. Third, uh, <clears throat> 87 divided by 3 is whatever. You know, I mean, you don't really have to do the math. But, once again, by a certain distance of that being divided by 3, your lure is going to tell you its optimum range of operation. If we can get to stop and go to clear. There we go. Alright, so... Let's try that again. Let's say it's what? 83. Let's say 27. Just for the purpose of the math. Okay. So by 27 feet, my lure should go up and it should begin to show that it is giving me a presentation. Right? Oh, look at that. Caught a fish. Not a, not on a peak time. We pissed him off. We pissed him off. That fish ain't even hungry. We made him angry. So we got our first fish of the day on a non-peak time. Right? Let's put him in the bag. Alright. So let's cast out here again. Alright. So... Our cast was 59 feet. Let's call it an even 60. So by 20 feet, right, my lure should rise up and begin a presentation, right? And it will show me exactly the best place where the pressure on the water, the speed of my reel, the recovery rate of my reel, at its absolute minimum, my lure will perform at its absolute best. So here we go. All right, so my lure is telling me that it works probably best right there, right? Like right in the middle, okay? Now, let's switch lures here. Um, okay, can't switch with the map that way, so we're going to go in here. I'm using a spinnerbait on this one. So... 
go back over here to our backpack and we'll get us this spoon this spoon works pretty good right so we cast out we're at 99 feet thank you lord for the easy math huh. so by 33 feet of reeling at the slowest speed my lure should begin its presentation and it will tell me the best way to present my lure do i want it down at the bottom do i want it in the middle or do i want it up near the top so by 33 feet right so here we go all right so the lure started telling me that this lure is going to work best down near the bottom so i've heard a lot of people say when you cast your lure into a deep lake wait for it to sink all the way to the bottom and then start your presentation absolutely wrong you have a fish's attention the minute that that lure makes a splash so you want to begin your presentation immediately don't wait for it to sink to the bottom kind of start your presentation as it sinks now let me show you once again we are not in a pink peak time let's try to feed a fish a lure on pure aggression let's take advantage of his instincts all right so as you can see we have a marker out there i'm going to throw towards that marker all right the lure splashed it's sinking right i prefer stop and go according to our lure it works best near the bottom right right so keep it in that range There you have it. Oh, that's a snag. That happens, folks. Now, just because we cast over there doesn't mean that there's a fish over there we're going to excite. You know, I mean, it depends on the lure. Depends on the presentation. And it also depends on the fact that how good you are with using a casting spoon as opposed to a different style of lure okay so that broke free all right let's move over just a little bit see if we can try that again doesn't work every time you know it's called fishing not catching You know, this, this really is a matter of preference, too, here, guys. So, you know, like I said, I'm not the greatest with working a spoon. You can see I have it working, but it's not one of the easiest lures for me to keep in a target range. So, anyway, let's go back. Let's go back to the spinnerbait. Get this guy in here go back to the spinner bait because I'm a little bit better at keeping that within the range where it works out so oh no wonder there's the problem my real speed my real speed my stop and go works best on my reel on my setup on speed two all right let's try that again see like I said you know I mean advance to level 45 a lot faster, making a lot of mistakes, not knowing everything. Okay, so let's see if we can encourage this fish to bite out of pure aggression. Come on, baby. Come on. 
All right, so maybe it's not the best spot to cast in. Maybe there's not a fish over there. Let's try over here and see what happens. Okay, so four hits. We start our presentation. All right. I swear, it seems like every time I make these videos, there we go, there was the strike. We had a strike from a non-hungry fish that we made mad. Boom, there he is, he hit it again. Okay, so, there you have it. The lure is in the right place where it works at its absolute best and our advantage, taking advantage of non-hungry fish. Lure hits, start our presentation, All right? We're working him. You know, do we, we, we got his attention as soon as the lure hit the water. Can we keep his attention and provoke him is the question. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not the greatest with working a spoon. Boom, there you've seen it. We had to hit. Right? And these are not hungry fish. It's not a peak time of the day. The only thing we're doing is making them mad. Once again, not the greatest with that. So let's go back. Let's go to a lure that I'm a little bit better with. Where is my spin of beat? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. God, my eyes are so bad. X series crankbait. Nope, not in that hole. Not up there, definitely. X series bass jig. It's got to be in here. It's got to be. Barbus narrow. There we go. X series spinner. Was that the X series spinner? Series Barbus Spinner Head Mounts. There we go. That's the right one. Okay, so if you remember, our spinner bait works probably at its best operating range, somewhere near a middle level retrieval. Now again, this is a shallow lake. It's not all that deep. Doesn't take the spinner forever to get to the bottom. So we'll cast over here. Start our, start our presentation. I like stop and go. So we're somewhere near the middle. Okay, guys, I'm, I'm just thinking that this morning, this side of the lake is a little bit dry because it's just not happening over here. And I think I heard somebody once say, if it ain't working, try something else. All right, so let's go back over here where we did get some bites. Okay, cast it out. Start our retrieve. We're in our range. You know, there you go. There you have it. There's your fish. Not even hungry. And he hit it because we made him mad. All because the lure is being used at its absolute best of its ability due to where it works in an optimum performance range. So, let's try it again. 
start our retrieve. Trust me, we have his attention. Can we keep it? Can we make him angry? Not every cast is going to bring a fish, folks. Alright, so we're just going to abandon that cast and we're going to move over just a little bit. Try that again. Our retrieve is started as soon as we hit the water. We're within our range. I was once told there's a fine line between catching fish and standing on the, on the shore looking like an idiot. Probably right about now I'm standing on the shore looking like an idiot. But you can see that it actually does work. Let's try one more. You know, that's one thing I'm going to show you in this video. It's completely unadulterated. I don't... I don't fish the clock. I fish the lake. I take the good with the bad. There we go. There was a strike. Right? We encouraged the non-hungry fish to strike yet again. Didn't hook him. He probably wasn't all that angry. He didn't give it his best shot. You know, but he did hit it. And it's all because we're working the lure to its absolute best of its ability. Right? See, we got the couple of dots, not completely three. You know, we can get the three. <laughs> that's great. If you can keep it at two, that's fine too. You know what I mean? You just got to have his attention. <laughs> so we'll go back over to this side. Let's see if this side's getting warmed up yet. Let's see if the fish are awake this morning over here. Nope. Don't seem much like it that they're awake on this side, but you can see that it does it does work. You know, as long as you can keep that lure in that range. Um, so let's do this. Let's go ahead and forward the time where we are fishing in a peak. Next, let's come up to a peak time. We'll go there, there. It's not completely in peak. It's just starting up the peak. All right. So let's cast over here. They should be a little active over there. The weather should have warmed up nicely for them. Uh, they should be out on the beach in their sunbathing suits and got their suntan lotion, listening to the radio. Let's see if we can piss them off and provoke them into a fight. Thinking that corner over there is just dead today. Just dead today. Alright. Let's reel that in. You know, I'm just reeling in real quick like this, guys, for the sake of the video. 
try and keep it short and sweet to show you what I'm what what, what I'm trying to do here. So that's about our optimum range. Bay. Okay. Yeah, that corner that corner over there is just not hot today. So here we go again. Oh, just so you know you're gonna be on my YouTube video. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. You're sorry, but yet you keep staying you keep playing with the dog. Because I love the dog. That's fine. Can I not love my puppy? Yeah, he probably loves you back. Enough to give me to let me have do belly rubs. So, what you doing for your video, pops? I'm working on a fishing planet video today. What's it for? Trying to teach people how to encourage fish that aren't hungry to bite a lure. And there we had the strike, and we missed it. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of videos on the proper way to figure out how to use your lure, baby. Oh, hush, Grandma. You know, people will show you the spot where the fish, they'll show you catch them a fish, but they won't show you how, how to put that lure in the fish's face to the best effect of it. Alright, I'm going to get going, though, Dad. Alright, baby, I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Bye. See you on YouTube. Yeah, I know. You do have a channel, don't you? All right. So, let's see. I had a strike while we were playing with my daughter there. I swear, guys, I, I, I try and make these videos. It seems like it never... There we go. There's our hit. There's our hit. Took him a minute. He must have had to, he must have had to swim a long way to get that out one. We, we didn't drop the lure right in his front door. But, start our presentation immediately. You know, in, in deeper lakes... Um, you can do this as the lure falls. Just try and get the lure to move around a little bit. Occur on the fall. And 75 of those occur on the initial drop of the lure. Here we go. There was a hit. Sorry about that, guys. Interruptions, interruptions, interruptions. Let's see if we can continue this video just a little bit. So, we'll go back over here one more time. Start a presentation on the fall. Let it drop down. We work best right in the middle. You know, it, it's not to say that if we was doing the stop and go down here that we wouldn't get it and see that one hit it because I let it drop all the way to the bottom and that's because 95% of all strikes occur on the fall we had that fish's attention we stopped he was like okay and then we moved again and that's why he took that lure right 
We came to a dead stop. He saw his opportunity to move in. He's hungry because we are in a peak time. He was probably a little bit angry because we pissed him off. So that's why that hit occurred like that. But, you know, like I was saying, um, as I started to say, it, it's not so much that you won't get strikes if you're too high up in the top or if you're too low because fish do hit out of anger but if you're in that optimum range you're likely to catch a lot more fish a lot more often this looks like it's going to be a pretty good one folks so it's going to be a pretty good one. You know, using this technique, um, I can usually play maybe t probably two and a half hours, maybe three hours of real life time and fill that bag. And like I said, I made quite a few mistakes. I went to the lake and didn't take my boat, got my money all screwed up, ready to start my whole account over. But I decided to just go ahead and stick it out. Now I'm here in Alaska and I'm fishing in order to buy me the new bass. Not the, it's not the bass boat, but it's one of the upper end rubber craft. There you see we had a hit. Missed the strike because I'm talking. So we keep going. But, you know, okay, so, like I said, you, you may get strikes down here, right? You know, we're working that stop and go. You may get a strike just because you angered a fish because you, you know, bumped into him getting off the elevator or whatever. But, uh, you know, as long as you're in that optimum range, even if the fish isn't hungry, as long as that fish is in that area... You should be able to catch them. So, move over here a little bit. We start our presentation. Right? We're already working him. If he's there, if he's there, we're already working him. Boom! There he is. See how quick that was, folks? Knowing where your lure works its best at its best depth will benefit you whether you're new to this game whether you're old to this game um you know i don't mind fishing a lake and not catching fish all day and that's why i refuse to forward time um, for the most part, I don't like to forward the time. I like to fish the lake. I don't like to fish the clock. But, as you can see, you know, having knowledge of how your lure works its best is going to benefit you, new player, old player, um, it, you know, it, 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 it's just taking advantage of that fish at his weakness because you have every weakness working against you. You know, we don't catch fish on every, every cast, but as you can see, we're getting our share. Definitely getting our share. Okay, so that's for the X series spinner bait. Um, here's a lure that also works well at, at Alaska. If you can put it together, you should. I think I won the shad, but um, let's try a. Yeah. <laughs> 
Excuse me there, folks. Let's try a jig head and a shad. Okay, there is our half ounce jig head. Should be optimum for our rod set up here. We'll go up here to our red jelly shad. This lure actually does work pretty good here. So we cast it out. Oh, I have bad controller drift on this PSP. So forgive me for that. We set our speed down to 1. Our um, rule of thirds. We're going to come into 90 just for math purposes. Because I don't feel like doing it by 94. And begin our retrieve. So by 60-ish feet, our lure tells us that it is also a middle-use lure, right? That's where we're going to get our best performance. Right in here, right? So... We're just going to work it the rest of the way just to see what happens. Right? So anyway, let's cast it out there and test our theory. We hit the water. We start working it. Damn this controller drift. Urgh. That's what I love about these videos, babe. They are raw unedited so you can see you know the kind of things that you're going to experience in this game like me sitting here talking and not cranking my real speed back up <sighs> so we work our jelly shad in middle range all right so that retrieval was probably screwed up from the start Let's get our cast going here. All right. Boom. Damn controller drift. Boom. There's the hit. As soon as it gets within that range, we started working it on the drop. Bang, there's the fish. Even with the problems with controller drift. Um, you know, I mean, it's just, just no two ways around it, folks. Knowing where that lure performs, knowing that a fish is going to hit mostly on the fall, knowing that the splash, it, the instant that it occurs, you've already got his attention. Um, just all things that will work in your favor. Alright, so, what did I do there? Start working our lure. We're working that lure. Let it fall down into its range. Boom. See, there's the strike. All right, so I missed it. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. So... Let's try it again. Lure is falling. We're working it. Let it fall into its range. Boom. 
boom, there's the strike. Boom, there's the fish. Guys, once again, there's a fine line between catching fish and standing on the shore looking like an idiot. <clears throat> so, as you can see, having a little bit of knowledge of exactly how your lure works, how a fish's brain works a little bit. Boom, there's another one. Getting them on the fall. Not working hard. Can't catch fish on every strike. Or, 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 yeah, I can't even catch them on every strike. I did say that, right? You know, because I did miss a couple, right? Can't catch them on every strike. Can't catch them on every cast. But, we can encourage them to bite. Anger, hunger, fish weaknesses, lure presentation, water depth, weather, human weaknesses. Boom, there he is. Once again, not every cast is going to draw a strike. Not every strike is going to catch a fish. Hell, not even every cast is going to make it out into the water sometimes. But, let it fall. Boom, there we go again. We are quickly filling our bag as you can see. Let it hit. Work it on the fall. You know, just, just even that little bit of movement as, as it comes down. So we didn't get a strike on that one. Unless I'm thinking that, you know, dragging all those fish through that area over there, we probably frightened the fish. So we'll come over here, put that area cool down. We're working it. Okay, guys, this is going to be my last cast. Um, we catch a fish or we don't. You get the basic idea. So, anyway, that will be my last cast for this video. I'm just going to recap here. Cast it out. Let it drop to the bottom. Drop your real speed to its lowest speed. 117 divided by 3 is, um, well, whatever. The, the, the lore will come up. So, anyway, oh, got a snag. We're going to have to get that out. I don't like a raw video. I, I like a raw video because it just, you know, it, it, it shows <laughs> the reality of what's going on in game. So we'll cast it out. We won't go so far this time. All right. So 42. Um, three goes into 42. I'm going to say 
13, almost 14. So by 14 feet, our lure should tell where it wants to work. There you have it. It starts to twitch. It did it for us at 12, right? So we know that we are going to be using a best performance middle range lure. Let it drop. Begin to start working it. Just give it that little bit of movement. Don't take much. A lot of times you'll get the hit right there. So we're in our middle range. Got our presentation going. And sometimes that'll happen, folks. You'll hit like a real deep spot in the lake and it'll drop down when you like that. But that's okay. We just get it back up there and start working it again. But that's how you figure out, you know, where, where you want to present your lure at what depth. I hope this helps somebody. Um, as you can see, it does not work 100% of the time. However, it does work the majority of the time. Again, I hope this helps. If you like the video, please comment, subscribe, or share. Um, again, folks, good luck. Happy hunting. Um, just I'm going to postpone getting my boat for a little bit. Um, I think its cost was a hundred and ten thousand. Uh, we're gonna jump over to White Moose Lake just to show you a little bit more on this technique. As soon as I can get my lure in here, um, hopefully this portion of the video we won't experience controller drift. We won't have so many problems. Um, definitely hope not for the interruptions, but anyway, um, we're going to jump over to White Moose and show you this over there because that is an extremely deep lake. Um, yeah, where are we at? 109. Yeah, I only think, I think I only need about 32,000 more for that new boat. So, um, as you can see, it's not out of range so let's jump over here to white moose we'll leave here come back in a little while got eleven thousand just for making a video not too bad not too bad so that should cover the trip over to white moose for the most part Let's go ahead and fix our crap. Oh, we got a bait coin. Nice, 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 nice. So, here is, oops. Here is, God, my eyes. Plus, I'm playing this on, um, remote play too guys so that kind of screws me up a little bit it's North Carolina white moose there we are there we are all right so let's jump over here um buy our license yep close that out lose more money but that's okay like I said I'm pretty close to in that boat So, as we wait, we're going to jump in right here at the boat dock. Walk over here and see if Santa left us anything yet. That would be nice. That would be nice. 
Hey, look at that. We can get us a gift. What did we get? A Jolly Jerk Beat. One and a half ounce. Six odd. Nice, nice. Um, thanks to Dave for videos of um, everywhere all these wonderful gifts are. Um, I didn't complete most of the missions in this due to all my screw ups. Let's run over here to the snow pile because I'm going to eventually catch those burbot. <sighs> okay, so, um, these fish here seem to really go for the, um, narrow spoons. Get over here into the corner. We're going to fish right here. Straight out. Once again, as you can see, we walked in first thing in the morning. We are at a non-peak time. We're going to fish the lake. We're not going to fish the clock. Um, let's get our lure set up. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Next one down, next one down. Like I said, they, they really seem to dig the narrow spoons. This spoon I bought um, in the shop. It's a three-quarter ounce narrow spoon, which matches our setup. So, what we're going to do, our reel speed is down where we want it. We're going to cast out. Now, this is a really deep lake, and it takes a good amount of time for your lure to fall to the bottom. Um, I've seen people say, as far as like um, Emerald Lake, when you're trying to catch the fish over there, let your lure drop all the way to the bottom. That's not necessarily true. Um, if you can jig your lure a little bit, bounce it a little bit, get it to do something while it's falling down. A lot of times, again, folks, the fish are going to strike on that fall. So, for math purposes, we are going to come into 90 feet, or eh, 99 would have worked because we could have done that by 33. But we'll come into 90. So by 30 feet of a slow retrieval, my lure should tell me exactly where it works its absolute best. Alright, so here we go. And that's one of the lovely parts about this lake is that hard snag point over there. So we already got a snag to deal with. Once again, our raw videos, and we caught a shell. Hey, at least we're catching something. All right, so let me move over here just for shits and giggles. Try and get away from that snag point. <laughs> so, 66 divided by 3 is going to be 22. So somewhere around 22 feet, our lure should start to show us that we are doing a straight slow retrieve. Or it should start to show us that we are doing a um, straight retrieve because, again, because of the speed of my reel, because of its recovery. Um, mine's likely going to say straight, so let's figure out where our lure works best. Uh, damn drop off. But anyway, folks, I know for a fact that this, that is correct, accurate information. This particular lure does, you know, through experience, I know that, um, it works best close to the bottom. So anyway, let's turn back over this way. We're going to cast it out. 
floor hit the water. Let's see if we can get just some kind of movement out of it as it's working its way down. As it works its way down. A lot of times the fish will just hit it like right here. A lot of times they won't. But a lot of times they will. Okay, so our lure works best right around here. Let's get our reel speed back up. Get our stop and go going. Okay, so our lure works real good right there. Alright, once again, you can see an unsuccessful cast. You know, it's not going to work every time. If it did, they would call this catching, not fishing. So we get it to move a little bit, working it on its way down. Keep working our retrieve now because we're in that optimum range. Alright, so in our last video, that's probably not going to be our hot spot for this morning. Let's take a cast over this way. See what we get. Working it on its way down. Boom, there was the strike. Now again, these fish are not hungry. Non-peak time. Right? So I got a couple of markers out there. Um, what was I getting there? What was I catching there? What was I catching there? See, I think it's... Alright, Atlantic Salmon. Atlantic salmon. Let's see if we can encourage the Atlantic salmon to be our friends this morning. While they're not hungry. Working it down. Yeah, I just, I mean, I like white moose. I like fishing here. Um, the fish are fun to catch but it is a very deep lake takes some time to get down to the fish boom there's our fish not hungry we worked on his aggression Right?
right? We worked on his aggression. Boom. Atlantic Famine. Took a little bit because this is kind of a cold lake. It's a deep lake. Work it down. Work it down. We got some movement coming out of it. So, you know, like I said, as soon as you got that splash, you have his attention. Can we keep it? Can we anger him? Can we take advantage of his instincts? See, I'm probably still just a little bit high there. Because, like I said, this lure works better closer to the bottom. As it proved in our one-thirds. Yeah, we hit that deep pocket. Drop down into it. Right, we'll abandon that retrieve. I like to stand right here when I'm fishing out this way. As you can see, I have my mark there. Cast. Where's the little fat tree? Little fat tree, little fat tree. There it is, right there. No, that's not the little fat tree. That's just the little fat tree right there. Alright, we'll go here. This is a pretty good spot. Doors hit the water. We got some movement coming out of it on its way down. Still on that bowl. Yeah, this 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 lake has a lot of density because of the temperature and uh you know, it takes a minute to get down there. Um, fishing here is not quite as quick because the um, temperatures, but there's our hit. Of course, I miss. We're in that optimum range. And we hit them pockets, which causes our lure to drop. But you can see, you know, as I showed in the previous video, um, as I show in this video, uh, it's not so much about the depth of the fish as it is the presentation of your lure. Um, you know, sharks come from hundreds of miles at the smell of blood. Bass reside 10, 12, 20 feet, 33 feet, 37 feet. Come all the way from the bottom to hit top lures. That is presented in the right way. So, you know, you are... Taking advantage of the fish's natural hunger, his natural aggression, talking, not working my lure in the optimum range, uh, rough with that little pocket there. <laughs> So anyway, um, you know, we did get the one strike. Um, haven't caught a fish yet, but we did get the one strike. We did um, get the fish's attention while he wasn't hungry. We used his aggression. Now let's go ahead and fast forward our time. Something I do not like to do, but I am going to do it for the purpose of this video. So now we are in their feeding time. Let's see if we can take advantage of his hunger. Right? So we'll cast out there. Lure hits the water. 
Boom. There's your initial splash. We'll start working our lure. Just keep that little movement on it. You know, it ain't got to be nothing big. Just got to have something showing as it falls down. You know, because we got his attention on the splash. We try and keep his attention till we get down into our optimum range. And begin to fish the lure. So we hit that deep pocket again. All right, well, look. So, um, probably not the best spot. So, let's go after a little bit more aggressive fish. Right? Let's go down here to the other end of the pier. And try and see what we can do with some pike, who I also believe do not mind this lure. <clears throat> Once again, I believe I got this spot from Sopa Days. Where the pike are, we might even run into some burbot over here. We could run into some Atlantic salmon. We could run into anything over here in this corner. I think I've caught them all here. There's a splash. There's the drop. Start working the lure. Okay. Go into our full stop and go. Mm, white moose is tough. White moose is tough, guys. Tough, tough, tough. I tell you, the first time I came up here, I, um, well, I was just so unprepared in my setup. These fish beat the hell out of my equipment. Okay, there he is. There he is. Now we're on a warm spot. Now we're on a warm spot, guys. But you see, we kind of just worked it down. And we got our Atlantic salmon. So... Let's go back over here to the same spot. Cast it out. Or works best near the bottom. Kind of work it as it goes down. Got the attention. Let's keep it. And we're near the bottom. We start our presentation. And once again, we hit the white moose weeds. Ugh, this lake. God, I hate this lake. I hate this lake. I hate this lake and I love this lake. I think I love to hate this lake. So, start working our lure on the fall. As we go to get into our spot, we are optimum. Begin to work. And we are in the white moose weeds again. 
If anybody has any ideas on um, a four-wheel drive lure where I could purchase one of those, I would love to have that for this lake. Oh my God, what a four-wheel drive lure. Try to imagine that. But no, folks, um, actually, you can get weedless lures, uh, the frog poppers, the good weedless, the, uh, just the straight frog is a good weedless for fishing over there in Florida. But, we are not in a lake for topwater lures, somebody setting on some fireworks, let's see if we get an antlered out of that, that'd be great. Boom, there's the hit. You know, I mean, uh, I would try discussing this with somebody, how to determine the best use of your lure. And they told me I was wrong. I said it works for me. They said if it works for you, keep doing it. So, okay, I'm going to keep doing it. I got no problem filling my bag, buddy. Which, if I keep this kind of thing up, I'm going to need a bigger bag eventually, guys. Especially if I get a faster boat. There's our antler. Look at that. What'd we get? Oh, the 21 pound. Dude, I needed him. I was struggling so, so bad to get that 19. Oh. Oh, I needed that. I needed that. Yes, that goes to my mission. Beautiful. Thank you, whoever set off them fireworks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <gasps> what happened to my rod? I didn't break it, did I? No, I didn't break my rod. All right, all right. So let's try it one more time, folks. Lure hits the water. Get some kind of movement out of it. You know, yeah, just boom. See, there was a strike on the fall. So we're in optimum range. Start our presentation. Now, I hope by now I haven't bored you guys to death saying the same thing over and over and over again. But, just trying to stress the importance of, you know, knowing exactly where that lure needs to be for the fish's attention. And that's a good explanation point on it right there for us to catch another antlered salmon. So, again... We are going to cast it out, splash, get that movement out of the lure, boom, strike on the fall, guys. Can't say it enough, can't say it enough, understanding your opponent wins wars. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to bring this fish in. I'm going to show that technique for determining exactly how to figure out what is the best use of your lure. Just one more time. Is that another antlered? Nope, a trophy Atlantic salmon. See, guys, fine line, catching fish, standing on the shore looking like an idiot. Um... Once again, I'm going to show that technique just to figure out how you would know where your lure is going to run, what it needs to be at, at depth, no matter what presentation you give it, whether you're twitching, whether you're...